Good morning, everybody. We're uh, able to sit down with James Hudson. We're here at Ocean Products this morning, and uh, he's uh, he ran Coopers and uh, spent a lot of time in Hampton, and so uh, we're getting ready to do the festival there. So he agreed. To, he was very polite and uh, agreed to sit down and share a little bit of the history and tell some of his story. And uh, so James. Uh, you know, were you born here in Matthews? No, I was born in Norfolk, Virginia. And so, how old were you when you think you were? Were you connected to the seafood industry at that time, or? Uh, my daddy was a merchant marine sailor, and that's why I was born in Norfolk. Okay. But I'm from here. I, you know, we we came here and bought my uncle's house. His name was Stanley Callis, Jimmy Callis's father. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, 1953. It's, you know, I was only three years in Norfolk. Right. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. So you came here. Did you say you were from? You went. You were in New Point. Uh, the family, uh, the Hudson name is supposedly from a group of Hudsons in the West Point area, and supposedly they got tired of farming and they all moved to New Point to pound that. I hear that. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. So, you you did you you said your dad pretty much started the business ocean products and everything, right? Yes, he was a, a he was a rope salesman, but before that, he uh, worked for Paxton. Okay. Paxton Distributorship. That's yeah. where he cut his teeth. Right. And he ended up landing a nice sales job mm -hmm. for Samson Cordage Works. It's a big big manufacturer of ropes, high-tech ropes now, a big worldwide, and uh, they're for Boston. I hear so that. He, he put, easily put 50, 100,000 miles on a car. He, yeah. He burned cars up every two years, driving to Louisiana. <laughs> wow. And uh, so he just, uh, he was still working for Samson, and he started this. Oh. Him and my mother started it, mm -hmm. uh, which was, uh, you know, a pretty pretty uh, risky move but uh, mm. it worked out really well yeah. yeah well those who take the chances are the ones that you know pays off in the end so yeah, yeah. He, he worked hard yeah he, he had a high school education but it was only 11 grade 11 grades then yeah he, they didn't have 12 grades right well times were different then yeah, yeah. but so y'all acquired Cooper's in the eight in 1980 I think you said yeah, March of 1980. And so, do you do you know any of the history before you all? You can you share any of that, or I mean, like who you all bought it from? And uh, you you mean Co Coopers? Coopers, we bought it from uh, uh, the uh, the Cooper family. Uh huh. Uh, there were two brothers that came from Chicago back in World War Two. You know, when everybody was going to Europe to fight the war. Right. And they ended up settling here. And one of the guys' name was Joe Tannum, and the other was Joe Greenberger. They married the Cooper sisters. Okay. And that's, that's, and that's who ran it. Joe Greenberger ran it. Tannum ended up running the Hampton Rubber. Mm -hmm. They owned the Hampton Rubber, too. So yeah. that's that's who, who we bought it from. I hear that. And so when y'all bought it, you went and lived in Hampton for a while yeah. and ran it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I went down to Hampton, lived in an apartment. I lived over on Saunders Road for about four or five years, maybe. And then I got people to run it and uh, it, that lived in Hampton. Right. But it was, it was good times. It was, oh, yeah. It was a fun time. I know when we were dredging crabs out of Hampton Creek, I mean... Yeah, we'd come in there if we needed some oil skins or gloves or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it was well supplied and yeah. you know well stocked and yeah. had whatever you needed. And yeah. and it wasn't just us on Hampton Creek, but everybody in the whole area would come there. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was. I think the first week I was there, some old guy came in and told me he had his first drink in that store <laughs> because it was a ship channel, a ship supply where they, you know, they took small boats and supplied ships. Right. In Hampton Roads. Uh-huh. And he said it had a bar. 
<laughs> wow. guy was like yeah. 90 years old. He said, son, this is where I had my first drink. Right here where the cash <laughs> register was. And I said, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. Right. So, yeah, I, I guess, did you enjoy, uh, did you get to meet a lot of people? And Oh, yeah, tons of people. Yeah. yeah tons of people. And y'all were right next door to Hicks? Yeah, yeah. We we owned Hicks's when we bought it. Hicks's was part of it. Okay. The, the Green, Mr. Greenberg owned that too. Uh huh. And it was a, it was a welding shop, but he made the dredges. And uh, you know he was a character. <laughs> he was he was a, he was a tough old guy. Yeah, he, he only was. had one leg. Yeah, and, right. And. Uh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't wear. He he had a crutch, but he wouldn't wear it. He threw that up, up on the ceiling in the warehouse. And uh, everybody liked Lucius Hicks. He was he was a good guy. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Do you, do you remember what year he stopped, or when y'all y'all acquired y'all were able to turn the building into a warehouse at one point? Yeah. So do you know about what year he may have stopped, and y'all were able to do that? Uh. I, I guess immediately, you know, he he uh, he quit having a business there, uh, but he still went home and made crab pots. He made crab pots for everybody in Grafton. Uh -huh. And he made a lot of, I think he he hung some gill nets for us too, because we had everybody in, in three counties. I would take gill net supplies, take all the parts, and they'd hang the nets. Right. That was, that was going on big time back then in the days, in the days too. Uh -huh. spot fishing mostly. Oh, uh, he he was still pretty healthy, you know. I, you know, I think he passed away uh, a few years back. I, I don't know. Right. Uh, I had seen him a long time, but mm -hmm. he would he would always come visit us and buy crab wire and make crab pots. Yeah. For a long time. But, uh, now to answer your question, he was uh, pretty much out of it when we bought it. Okay. Uh, that's, and we went and renovated that little warehouse, hmm. put put some men in it, and made it a little storage house. Right. Uh, so, but I remember, <clears throat> I remember him out there working on the dredges, and yeah, it had a dirt floor in it and all. It's, yeah, that was built <coughs> in 1957. Okay. That building, but hmm. didn't have the dirt floor. No. Uh -huh. <clears throat> well. So then, uh, city of Hampton decided they wanted to make some changes, and they came along trying to buy up all the property. And yeah, yeah they did. They bought a lot. They bought mm -hmm. a lot. And they bought. They bought our warehouse. We had a, a separate warehouse next to Morgan and Marrows. Uh -huh. It was in between Morgan and Marrows and the Crab Kitchen. Uh huh. And the Crab Kitchen was that was a lot of fun. I, was, I miss the Crab Kitchen. Yeah, I, I tell you what. Yeah, I gained, I gained about twenty pounds quick. Yeah, I know it. Uh huh. Yeah. If you was anywhere near there, you had to go get you a crab burger. Yeah, yeah, that was a neat place. Uh huh. Yeah. But well, time always brings change. So now uh, people get to go there, and ride the merry-go-round from Buckrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put the big museum up, all that. Yeah, all right. All big, big changes over the years. Yeah. But Amory's is still hanging in there. Amory's still hanging in there. Mead's still running it, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lost touch because I don't go down there anymore. My delivery driver goes down there. Right. Yeah, that's about it. Graham and Rollins are still there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we drudge crabs. For... Was, there was, in the heyday, I think there was five crab houses in downtown Hampton. Yeah. Uh, it, it was probably that many when I went down there in 1980, but they started going away. Right. Raymond Rollins was the last one. Uh huh. Yeah, you had John Phillips out on Armstead. And, you know, yeah. They, they didn't call it Crab. I had a reason to call it Crab Town. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, this Saturday we're gonna be doing the Crab Town Seafood Festival. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be in Mill Point Park, but there's a little walkway that comes from the park underneath. Uh, Settlers Land and Bridge, right, and connects to the marina with the boat slips and all, right. Yeah. So, those first slips up next to the bridge, are, we're going to have six boats there, three by boats, three open dead rises, and uh, going to be doing a nautical display right there on the bulkhead. And mm -hmm. so, uh, they wanted me to focus on the history, 
Mm -hmm. So you can't focus on Hamden Creek history without talking about Coopers and Hicks, you know. And yeah. So I was, I'm glad you were, uh, you, you agreed to sit down and talk with me and you're yeah. sharing some pieces with me and all and uh, yeah. you'll be there Saturday. So. So you had, you had crabbers that tied up and Amory had control and still does a lot of the docking there. Right. And then on the other side there on uh, Graham and Rollins, uh -huh. all that was, uh, you had migrants from Tangier. You had a whole group from Tangier that tied up there and lived on them boats. Yeah. You know. Right. And, and you know, we're in Coopers all the time, you know. Uh huh. Uh, so I got to meet a lot of Tangier, but I ended up hiring hiring one that, that ended up in Urbana. He, he's still working for me, Terry. All right. Yeah. And uh, you had you got some Gwen's Islanders uh hanging out around there living on the boats too. Yeah, well, my mother was from Gwen's Island. Uh huh. She was, a, you know, her mother was was a Gwen's Island native. Well, I just got to interview Carol Melvin here recently. Yeah. So yeah. that was a good interview. But yeah. So I mean, some of that's still going on. Yeah, <laughs> some of them are still hanging on. I guess most of them all approaching ninety. But right. You know, I'm seventy. Uh huh. <laughs> so it's, uh, I hear that. Well, they were good times, and, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm sure we'll never see it like that again, but, you know, so far, the watermen are hanging in there and, uh, you know, still making a living, still grinding every day. And, yeah. But, yeah, I started all this because I wanted to capture the history because the wooden dead rise is starting to fade away, you know. Yeah. So I want to capture all that while I still can. So then I figured if I, I started interviewing people, you know, and, and so I wish I'd been interviewing people the whole time, but yeah, yeah, I just kind of figured all that out here recently. So. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of stuff that's been forgotten. Yeah, probably the, the term "dead rise." Nobody won't know what it means fifty years from now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Unless you like do like you're doing it, you know, making a study of it. I went and saw Jeff Hogg yesterday and sat down with uh, Eddie Furman and Nate, his son, and we were talking how they don't even they don't even identify the rocks out on the oyster rocks out on James River. They don't they're not that's not discussed anymore at all. That that's not how they identify the areas they're working or anything. So all of that's gonna be lost. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So we're just, just trying to capture it. Keep uh, keep the memory alive, and uh, yeah. so I mean, when you get it in your veins, you don't get it out. So. <laughs> well, I could I couldn't get it out, even though I'm not. I, I've been a waterman. I've had a waterman license, but it was just more like a hobby, right? Uh, while I've been selling fishing supplies, uh -huh. just from that experience, you know, I know where, I know everybody in in from Maryland to South Carolina. I mean, you know, yeah, right. We we reach that far in our in our sales you know it's not mm -hmm. unusual for us to sell into Maryland Delaware the Carolinas right well and you just get to know everybody you know yeah well I mean to me it's a bit one big community I was just in Wan Cheese last weekend going down and interviewing some people and you know so I try to cover all the different areas and I've gotten to the point now where I've recruited somebody up in Maryland to start doing some things for me up there because I can't be everywhere at once. But, yeah, yeah. So, but well, they all do it different. It, you know, you can go two counties away, and the methods are different. Yeah. They, you know, the way they they want their pot pullers, or right. It, do, it doesn't matter. They they're, they're, there's a, a lot of dispute about how to fish <laughs> and what to use. And people think a crab pot's a crab pot, but people have their own ways of making them too. You know, and they're starting to change things and. Yeah, put yeah. opening doors on them and stuff. Yeah, you like don't that. have as much of the of the art of it. You know, now you've got a guy that he might not know how to catch crabs, but he makes the pots. Right. You know, mm -hmm. where uh, in the old days everybody made they, they hang their own nets, they made right. their own pots, and they all were real peculiar. Right. And, and fighting over, you know, that, that thing you ain't gonna catch no crab. You know, that funnel's too high. Right. You know, and that that was everywhere. I mean, yeah, you'd be surprised how much different a crab pot is in, in Maryland than it is in Virginia. Sure. And yeah. The, the big differences. Yeah, I know. So, all right. Well, uh, you know, we, I don't want to be here too long and hold you up. I know you're busy this morning. So, 
but I really... I'm busy getting ready to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good visit. But, uh, you know, I really appreciate you talking sure. with us. And, you know, I appreciate you letting me borrow these pieces for the show this Saturday and oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah, and, you're uh, welcome to take anything you want, Ira. We, you know, show them what you want. Well, I sure appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, thank all y'all for watching. And uh, like I say, we'll see where I end up next time. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs>